Hello and welcome to Thought for July the 30th. Our readings are 2 Samuel chapter 16, Jeremiah chapter 20 and Romans chapters 5 and 6. And our thought is that grace may abound. What is grace? Simple question, but the answer is not exactly simple. Of the four words that are in our picture, three are at the start of chapter 6 in today's reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let's try to understand the way in which grace operates. The word grace becomes a special word for Paul. He had been persecuting believers and he had put them in prison and had been complicit in the death of the first martyr, Stephen. But the Lord Jesus had picked him out as a chosen instrument, we read in Acts chapter 9, verse 15. We must put the word grace in, the, in its context. Regrettably, in much or so much of popular Christian teaching, this is not done. The Catholics set the example long ago by selling indulgences. Twice in chapter 5, which is also our reading today, Paul makes the point that those who have sinned following the example of Adam, and this is everybody, can experience the free gift. Verse 15, 16 and 17, we read the free gift of grace, which means unmerited forgiveness. Their sins are blotted out of God's sight. And Paul experienced this. How wonderful. Well, what then? Paul writes, Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Verse 20. Now, some read this as though it is saying that it does not matter how much you sin. Grace keeps on abounding. If they, or you, think that, they are completely missing Paul's point. He realized how much grace had abounded for him at his conversion. And now he has a faithful race to run on the narrow path that and look at what he writes in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27 drawing a parallel with the original Olympic Games. There is a misleading slogan once saved always saved but it is a distortion of the words of scripture. Note Paul's question what shall we say then? Are we to continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means, the AV says, God forbid. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And this immediately causes us to ask, how can we die to sin when we are surrounded by it? Our world has become so godless, it constantly bombards us with a great variety of temptations. Consider what Paul next writes. He says, the result of having died to sin was in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Verse 6. He previously knew of Christ, but what he knew he completely misunderstood. All that changed at his conversion. Not only did he put on Christ's name through baptism, he now belonged to Christ. And as he moves towards the climax of this most challenging epistle, he writes, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Chapter 13, verse 14. Having a genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus is the vital factor. More text will challenge our thinking on this as we come to chapters 7 and 8 tomorrow. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's Word, knowing that Word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.